Hello, happy World Breast Pumping Day. <laughs> I am going live with, you know, I've already claimed her as we are the dynamic duo. <laughs> um, so I am just waiting for Pump Mama Pump to join in. And she has joined and she will request in a moment and we will get ready to get started. Thank you all for popping in on World Breast Pumping Day. Yes. It is. I'm waiting for the connection to go. There she is. Hello. <laughs> good. Look, good afternoon. I had to like check the time. Yes. So, Hello. You know I coined us the dynamic duo, right? Yes, because we are. Yeah. <laughs> we truly love each other y'all because people can exist in the pumping space together yes and truly love each other we talk all the time by phone by on instagram dm y'all like this is no fakeness in here like i love this girl and yes. really, we never even met like <laughs> seriously because we got to stick together thank you all for joining us on world breast pumping day i am so excited to be here with pump mama pump we're gonna I'm talk about huh I said, I'm excited to be here too. Yes, we're going to talk about the 2022 theme, which is holding space. We're going to be real with you all because we know pumping is a lot like this space to have people, you know, here that truly support each other, truly recognize some of the issues, challenges, and all of that that comes with pumping. And so I will let Pump Mama Pump start and introduce herself and say anything that she would like to say. Okay, so hi, everybody. Of course, I'm so excited to be in this space today. Um, unfortunately, I forgot my stand, so the camera is going to be a little closed because I just forgot about it. You know, mom life, we kind of forget things like that. Um, but yes, I'm so excited about the theme for this year, um, World Rest Pumping Day. You know that this day exists. It, it's really still fairly new. I think it's about seven years old. If somebody mm -hmm. was like, you know, let's add this to the days of days. And I'm glad that um, they did add it because sometimes we don't see pumping as a big thing because it's not, you know, the baby is not actually at the breast. But I think that all the acknowledgement that we get and all of the shout outs that we get and, you know, everything that people say about breast pumping is important as well, just as, as it is important um, to having the baby at your actual breast. So I'm excited that... Um, today we could just join in this live together and that um like I said the theme holding space is just it's okay to not be okay um sometimes we just think that as moms or as people in general as women that we always have to be okay we wear so many hats and we don't really take time for our self-care and to do the things that we need to do for us and acknowledging that we're not okay is a big thing sometimes so just this theme, just saying it's okay to not be okay. It's a big one. Um, what do you think, Diana? So I'm going to be real because y'all know how I do. So this is hard out here. Yes. <laughs> Pumping day in and day out. First of all, we're going we're gonna to take a moment to recognize that there are two people. There are exclusive pumpers and there are people that pump and nurse. And so I'm going to talk to the exclusive pumpers for a moment. I got to let y'all know. Like, y'all are here. There's a real deal understanding. I'm going to let Pum 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 talk about it because we're going to be real today. In mourning the loss of nursing, I struggled with it for three months. I had plans to nurse. I wanted to nurse. That was what I really wanted to do. I struggled with it for three months until one day I put, my husband was like, why are you doing this to yourself? He was tip, um, tongue tied and lip tied. And we just had struggles getting that deep latch and i tried i had lactation consultant after lactation consultant pumping was going well but i just mourned that loss of nursing and to start my school pumping journey i knew no one like and also the people that i did know was kind of pushing me like you can do it just nurse 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 and i'm like this this itch ain't working here y'all like it's not working this this is not working and my husband's like why are you doing this to yourself and so at three months i put the my nipple in my, front of my son, my breast in front of my son. He laughed at me, like straight laughed at me. And I, from that moment on, I was content that I did all that I could do. And 
this is where I am. So that's what exclusive pump is for the, for the people, the community that nurse and pump. Like you, you here with us too, because in order to be separated from your baby, to be returning to work, whatever the reason, you if you are pumping, you're a part of this day too. And I know, you know, to add, if you have that nursing bond and have to add in pumping in your life just to continue to maintain your milk supply, mm -hmm. it's tough too. So we're creating space for everyone to feel acknowledged and valued. So I wanted to ask yeah. you, do you have any struggles with, did you try to nurse that first? And I don't even think we ever talked about that. So yeah, so when I had my baby, I had my first baby at 34 weeks and he had to go to the NICU immediately. They said, they put him up to my breast, like as soon as I had him. Of course he didn't let, she was brand new, probably tired from the whole labor. And so they were like, okay, we're taking him to the NICU. You, you know, you have to figure out what you want to do. And I'm like, okay. So I get to the NICU hours later because I had gotten an epidural. And they have a feeding tube in his nose. And I'm like, he didn't even really have an opportunity to do anything. But what are we supposed to do? So they said, you know, we have to still feed him. And so I got back downstairs. And, of course, like, I was upset because I, I didn't even get a chance to have lactation classes or anything like that. So I get downstairs and I have this nurse who comes in the room and she says, what do you want to do for your baby? She was so kind and gentle. Like, so my, my experience was probably like a lot of people. She was so kind and gentle. And I said, I want to feed my baby. She said, okay, since your baby isn't latching right, right now, what I want you to do is I want you to pump. And I said, okay. So she said, you know, this is the thing. When you first start pumping, you're not going to really get anything. She said, but don't be discouraged. She said, because you're going to be able to feed your baby. So, okay. So I know nothing about this pump. This is big industrial um, Amita. They had an Amita at the hospital. I was at a big industrial Amita. It was like honk, 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 honk. Like it was this big thing, <laughs> like a machine. And so I said, okay, I'm going to try this. So I pumped the first um, the first time, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. So she came back now on her next shift and she said, um, what did you get? I was like, nothing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we went back again and I mean, I did it again. I kept doing like every three hours and I finally got something. I showed her like the little container and like, I was just talking. So I showed her like the little bottle or whatever. It was way smaller than this. And it had like a drop in book. She said, see, you're doing it. You're doing it. So she was praising me and it was like amazing. So I think by the time, my baby was only in the NICU about three or four days. But by the, by the time that I got upstairs for the next visit for him, they had taken the feeding tube out. And they was like, you can give him the drops of your milk. He still couldn't latch, though, honestly. And um, they gave me a nipple shield because they said that I had inverted nipples. So, like, my process was, it was crazy. Like, I want to nurse my baby. And they're like, no, you're not going to be able to nurse him because, you know, without the nipple shield. And to be honest, for me, I just couldn't keep up with the nipple shield. Like even in the hospital, I would just wrap it up and make throw it in the trash by mistake. So, <laughs> so I couldn't do it. So I decided that pumping was going to be the thing that I did. And I honestly hadn't tried continuously after. I feel like after we left the hospital, I didn't even try anymore because I guess I was like, pumping is working for me. So, yeah. But for the other two, I definitely tried nursing and wasn't successful with it. Yes. Yeah. So. Long so, story. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I don't think we ever like. I know you're someone to think, but I don't th ever think like we talked about like more nursing in any way. Like, was it you know sadness or anything like that? Yeah. You know? And then like trying to find your spot in this. Like, I knew no one that pumped, and like I've like watched the last evolution of over almost four years now. And your kids are even older, so I know your evolution has been even longer to like watch what has been created in this space. All the companies, all the people, like it's becoming more accepted trying to find a spot for us, you know, because always everyone says breast pump, breast um, feeding and pumping, you know, but they're like pumping and feeding too. So it's like nursing and pumping, like, you know, trying to find that exclusive spot for us, like to be celebrated, to be an advocate, like we can do this. Cause I tell people all the time, I, look, I have, I think nursing is great for the people that do it, that want to do it, but it was not for me. It was not, yeah. it is not, what works for me scheduled I like the plan I like to have like my life and I can you know I put you know you can just I can drop them off at daycare when it's time to go back to work I have to stress about finding a bottle what to use yeah. what to do like I use my leave to like for me and us to bond in a different way and so yeah but yeah feel celebrated in that we feel like we got it like I was ashamed like I was ashamed that like I actually like it worked for me I mean 
the poem of purpose you see today is now who I was when I started this journey. Like, understand, it's evolutions to this, you know? So, yeah. So I think for me, I had people that were, because um, one of my friends had a baby the previous year. And then another one of my friends had a baby like two months before me. So we, I was kind of pregnant with, I was pregnant with my friends. And so all of them actually nursed. And I was the only one that did not. And so when they were holding their babies nursing, sometimes I would be like, hey, you know, but then I realized like, you know, I, I had my pump. That's my, cause my pump became like my friend, right? Like my little <laughs> companion, right? So we would go everywhere together. Like you see me, you see her. So, <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I did kind of, I would say I did grieve the fact that I couldn't, or more the fact that I couldn't um, nurse. But then I was like, okay, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I really, I really was like, when they were holding their babies and they were like nursing and it was real quick and I'm sitting there 30 minutes later, huh, 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 you know, with the pump. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, they're done. You know, you can just whip your breasts out. But, you know, I I became comfortable with it. And, you know, I and I, and I, because I became like an oversupplier, mm -hmm. I had so much milk. Um, I was just like, you know, I could just go anywhere. Like you said, like I didn't have to worry about the baby, not wanting to go with anybody else because you know they want to see me next to me and my breasts and everything like that so you know I, I just kind of dealt with it but I didn't really say that I wasn't okay like so this space here is is phenomenal phenomenal for me because I, I never had the opportunity to say I'm not okay still feeding them you know but I want to nurse them so yeah, it was it was definitely a process. And this all of the communities that we have now were not there in 2017, to be honest. They weren't. Hence the reason why I wrote a book, because the information that was there, it was it was here and there or everywhere. And I couldn't find what I needed. So I'm like, let me create a book where everything is documented. You get an ebook, just click on the table contents and go to the thing that you want. Cause it was, it wasn't as much information. Like we have reels, we have all kinds of, you know, information now. Back then, nothing. You're just sitting there, like, what do I do with this pump? Yes. You have the directions, but it's like, flange size. What? <laughs> exactly. Using twenty four. Like, yeah. Twenty four is is that was the thing. It's like it doesn't matter if your nipples are rubbed up against it or not. This is what you use. You deal with it, and it was there was no education really. Back in 2017, which isn't even that long ago. My baby will be five. I mean, my oldest child will be five. That's not even that long ago. But, you know, we have evolved as a community, and I, I love it. I do, too. So we want to make this interactive. So if you have any questions, comments for us, feel free to write it in the chat. I'm checking them. But we did I put up a question box um, to call, you know, if anyone had any questions. So we did have a couple to come in. So um, the first one was about exclusive pumping. So they were... And I see the one on flame side. So look, I gotta write everything about <laughs> out to get a minute. Um, Me too. I want to comment about the person is currently exclusive pumping and they're wanting to have baby number two. And so once baby number two, they're wanting to know thoughts on you know, do you want it? Should they exclusively pump while they are pregnant? And so want to say, you know, first and foremost, please, please, please always like, check with your doctor because you know I know. And, you know, if there are underlying conditions, if it's safe to do so. I mean, me personally, I got pregnant at nine months with my second son. I ended my journey. I had enough milk. So I knew I wanted to get pregnant soon. So I pumped and pumped and pumped and then had enough milk to last into age one. So that is what I did. That is what my doctor recommended just due to my fertility and everything. So I don't think where I want to like respond to like, should you do it? Is it possible? Yes, it's possible. I know people to do it all the time. I just want to make sure that you are checking with your doctor to make sure it's safe. You know, your body contracts regardless and, you know, don't want to put any stress. Nutrients taken from pumping from the baby that you're pregnant with. So please, 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 please check with your doctor first um, to, to go. So um, the second question, which you can help answer for us. I'm not, you know, my son was in the NICU. He was only in there for three days. Um, it was a battle. I'm not even going to pretend. I cannot imagine people that have to leave the hospital without their baby. So I'm going. I'm not even going to try to pretend that I know what that feels like. So our second question was about advice, tips on pumping while your baby is in you and or as a preemie. 
So, yeah. So, my story is similar to yours. Like, my baby was in the NICU three days as well. But I, had, I, did, I did have to leave him, though. Um, that was that was devastating. Like, I just don't even want to talk about that because that's just... <laughs> Listen, you know, like, that, that experience was nothing that I would wish on anybody. Um, but, yeah, so pumping with a baby in the NICU, because while he was gone, of course, I had to get a rental pump because I did not know that I was about to have a baby at 34 weeks, you know. My water broke at Target. You know, I'm walking in Target to make my returns. My water breaks. I make my returns still because I knew that I wasn't going to be able to make them later. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I I just pumped. Like, I still pumped around the clock. So I did all my sessions, the 369-12, 369-12, eight, you know, for the eight sessions a day. Um, I logged them. And I would just, of course, store the milk. Um, so originally you would have the little the little or bottle, so you have the colostrum at first, and then um, you would then develop the milk that you needed. But as I stated, I just pumped all eight sessions because I, I believe that it increased my supply. And of course, back then we didn't have a technical term for um, all the things that we did, but I felt like I was tricking my body into thinking that I needed this much milk. You know, so I feel like my body was like, oh, you need it. Oh, you need it. Oh, you need it. With the eight times a day, you know, my body was starting to get conditioned to needing milk. Um, it's, you know, the, it's supply and demand. So I just kept pumping the whole time that the baby was in the NICU. And it wasn't long, but the lady who was next to me, her baby was in there for eight months and she had pumped for that long. So, yeah, around the clock, too. So I would say just pump, just keep pumping the whole time and of course it's just it can be a lot because your baby isn't present but you're still giving your baby a milk so yeah so um i would just you know go in while i was in the hospital i would you know had a c-section so i would like mosey on down son was born at the, one of the best hospitals in the country. i had no idea that that was gonna need a nicky so but usually they just can't a pump you know either uh, medela or amita platinum and just give it to you. there are no directions they don't tell you <laughs> do they don't give you any help they don't tell you anything they're just like here you know just go pump so if you are lucky to find someone that can show you how to use a pump feel free to reach out to me in a second if you want to like go through i don't know what pumps you're using making sure you have an effective pump i've rented as well um for three months that's what i did i say you know what my supply would be like if i did not rent that amita platform because that's what they told me, you know, because I wanted to pump, you know, I didn't realize like all the pumps out on the market. There's so many, you know, depending on what works well, what doesn't, you don't know. So I would say making sure you use an effective pump, pumping every, I, I will say every three hours, you know, for at least those 30 minutes, because you don't know what your supply is. You're, you know, you don't know until you know. And then if you don't do something in the first 12 weeks to make sure you're sufficiently empty, like you can hurt your supply. So just making sure you have the right pump, you have the right size. So that was a question as well. Um, you know, just about sizing and getting a number, like making sure that you are, you know, measuring plant size because they just give you a twenty, they give you a twenty four and a twenty eight somewhere on those lines in any pump. Like you got to find cushions if you, you need to measure. Make sure your nipple is not rubbing; it's not too big. You know, your whole area full of going in there. So yeah. Make sure you get a plant sizing because. We are not all 24s or 28s or 20, you know, like, there are nuances. And I was using the wrong flange size the whole time. Like, you know, luckily I'm a, you know, I'm a 21, so I wasn't too far off. But, you know, I was 18, then I said, you know, I have elastic nipples, so I'm a 21. So, But I was using the 24, like, wonder why my nipples are a little pink right now, because <laughs> that used the yes. right size, y'all. So, yes. And the uh, importance of using the right flange size, um, Yes, I think that's the best. I agree. I agree. Um, like you said, people will literally just, I mean, well, when you're in the hospital, they'll just give you the pump. Like, you want to breastfeed? Okay, take this pump. You have this now. And, mm -mm. but I do think that now, like, with having a baby last year, mm -hmm. I feel like they, they had a little bit more, like, bedside manner or care that they gave because the nurses that I had were amazing. And like even the lactation specialist or counselor, she came in and I was talking to her because the thing is, even with each baby, your milk supply, it's like, even if you can be a professional pumper, honestly, you'll still question like, where is my milk? <laughs> like I had my second baby. I'm like, 
when is this milk coming in? And I had my third baby and I didn't have like, I'm like, the drops were not even there. I'm like, maybe I'm not going to have milk this time. And even before having her, I had nightmares like, I'm not going to have any milk. I'm not going to have any milk. But, you know, the lactation um, consultant came in and she was just making sure that I knew, like, you just you just have to keep pumping. Don't worry. You know, it's coming in. <laughs> and it is. Fear, though. Like, even now, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I'm just thinking I'm going to wake up one day and not have any milk. I literally, <laughs> you know, the most, like, my cycle about to come. I'm like, let me go look at my calendar, the health cycle calendar, my iPhone to see what, what day I am. Like, what's going on here? So, literally, the fear is real about, like, I'm just going to wake up with no milk. You know, I don't know why. Even in my second journey, like, knowing that, you know, it is just God. So, yeah, a great question about... How can guys help in the pumping process? And so I will tell you <laughs> from my uh, end. So y'all know, like, my husband, I love him to death, y'all, but he's not inclusive journey. I pump parts. He don't know how to put my pumps up together. He has not been included. But guess what? We, we're still married. Like, first and foremost, <laughs> you, you got a conversation ahead of time, like telling your partner what you need, but also accepting if that's, if he can't reach in place with you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, for me, first of all, I want him touching my stuff. Like, I'm a type A person. Plus, if I'm going to waste my milk on the floor, if I'm going to leave it out for the wrong amount of time, I'm going to be the one to do it. So he had all his experience. <laughs> he had it on his You know, I told him what he needed to do, but no, he was not First of all, my husband don't wash the dish anyway. I mean, he washed the pots and pans because he cook. I don't cook. We've got an unconventional, you know, thing going on here. But it works for us. So I will say, I'm going to let you say, you know, but I will say, just having those conversations on, you know, what you need, what you can provide. Because truly, especially in the Black community, like, first of all, we're probably some of the first generations to even pump. So first of all, guys, what's going on because um you know this is not what is is he so you know first of all having a, a supportive partner um is important but just recognize like you got to have those conversations with each other about what you need what you don't need what you're looking for um mm -hmm. recognizing like the postpartum emotions that happen with you know just First of all, mourning if you're mourning the nursing relationship or if you wanted to, you know, you thought your milk supply was going to be different. You know, you may have to supplement. There's just so many emotions going on. So just having those conversations up, honestly, about like how you're feeling as you're going through it. Yeah. So my husband, um, he, of course, is very supportive with my pumping journey. You know, he knows, like, if I get in the bed, so does she. The pump, you know, like, so... <laughs> Your husband bring your pump. I was, to, I was about to say that. I was about to say that. I was about to say that. So my husband, his part, he does not wash pump parts. Nobody washes my pump parts because I need to make sure that my pump parts are clean the way I would like them to be clean. Nobody, nobody is allowed to wash them. Okay, you set them on the side. Okay, I don't. You sit them in there, the basin for them. Nobody washes them. However, my husband brings my pump bag upstairs every night. Like that is his job. That is his responsibility to bring my pump bag upstairs now i am i'm not gonna say i'm waning but i had i don't pump as much anymore so the other night i said to my husband like wait you're not on your job why are you not bringing the pump bag upstairs anymore and he's like well kelly because he calls me kelly everybody calls me kelly but he says kelly um i'm not bringing the pump bag upstairs anymore because you don't pump at night and i'm like wait a minute how you gonna tell me i don't pump at night you know even though i don't i don't really pump at night I'm like, that's your job. That's your responsibility to bring the pump bag. So <laughs> that's just our little thing. But that's his way of being able to support my pumping journey. Um, like he, like Diana said, he wouldn't be able to put anything together. Like, and I've been pumping for three years. He doesn't know how to put anything together, but he does his part. And his part is to carry the pump bag. So, you know, <laughs> whatever, like she said, just having that conversation and that open communication with your partner or your husband or whoever he is, um, just that, you know, this is what you can do or you don't have to do anything. And that's cool, you know? Yes, like my husband knows, like, so I don't cook, y'all. So he knows the weight of my heart is fixing me a meal, y'all. Like, I love <laughs> So he will cook for me. He was very supportive. Like my, my sons, like both of them now, like becoming mamas. I mean, dad youngest son he still loves so he will tell her how water to get to me now y'all but my older son like if he don't see me for a few hours uh, you know maybe he may ask for me he loves that they used to mm -hmm. 
together. So like when my husband would come home, he would like get them, put him in his little car thing or whatever, take him through the neighborhood, let me like have my moment, pump, clean. Like those are the things that matter for me, not for me. What matters is other stuff other than handling pumping for me. But yeah. if you do feel like you need those things or you know your partner needs those things, then find out what they need. If it's something you can do for them, you know, like to help make their load easier. Like for me, my husband, no, Basement Fridays, I depend on Basement Fridays, y'all. Oh. When he puts those boys down the stairs and I get a full night to myself without worrying about some feet coming in the room, worrying about somebody make waking up in the middle of the night, like to have a nightmare screaming whatever it is like those are the things that help me. those are the things that my greatest space but also let me tell you what has been great my husband or your partner whoever advocates for pumping so i have like in, in in the black community a lot of thoughts there are a lot of things in any community regardless but in the black community especially my husband will go in on somebody real quick that say about pumping like you know like you know, I forgot someone said something. It was something about like, oh, well, you started purpose. So now you can start, stop these women from breastfeeding in public. And my husband was like, I know, I like went in on him was like, you're the last person to be talking about that. Like, I was like, yes, I taught him well, y'all. So um, <laughs> like, you, it's just, That's, really yeah. Funny. I have a support partner in whatever way that is. Even in families, like people have their thoughts about pumping, which you should be mm-hmm. doing as long as you should be doing it. Like my husband does not care. Like he knows that I truly want to do this. Like he doesn't care. I could do this. Mm-hmm. Like just he want me to like because he was like, you always pumping. <laughs> Cause I pump at night, y'all. Like I stay hooked up to the pump. He like, look, you always pumping. You get what I'm saying. <laughs> so <laughs> you got to take time for some things, y'all. But you know, he supports me in my journey, like whatever that looks like. Like I'm sure he would love to like have all of me in all ways at all times. But you know, he knows that it's important to me, so he creates that. Yeah, I love that, and that's that support is definitely needed because I'm just thinking about my husband. Shout out to him, even though this post isn't about our husbands, but I, I mean, there's a lot of it about them. But you know, like even with Pump Mama Pump, from his infancy, my husband literally takes like the little cars to Pump Mama Pump. And if you see pregnant women, he's like, oh, you got to get my wife's book. And I'm like, I feel like all my Amazon sales and everything are because of him. Because he's like, you got to get this. You need this. Get it for your baby shower. You know, I'm like, thank yes. you, honey. Because I'm like, you. he's definitely a pumping advocate as well. Um, so, yeah, I think that just including yeah. them, however, however. And I even know. for us, like, I think even for people out here that are currently on their journey, like if someone told me I would have home with purpose today, I would think they were crazy. First of all, I don't want to want a business. Second of all, I was like, whatever y'all like, they were like, you need to like start a business. I need to do this. And I'm like, no, but what the greatest gifts are from trauma. I say that. Yeah. I struggle with, you know, having, you know, going through switching from nursing to pumping. And like, like I said, this advocate, you know, this person you see today was not who I was or almost four years ago. So just know that like, if you're struggling right now, find your space, find your community, but also like, don't ever turn a blind eye to like helping the next person. If yes. you're at an appointment, you're walking down the street, if you see someone pumping in the car, like go pumping. I, I got pumping purpose all over my car, y'all. I got a license place. I got people walking up to me. I don't go too many places, but and what does that mean? It's all my clothes. They're like, what is that? And I have no problem telling them exactly what it is like I really want to advocate to us in the pumping community like regardless if you are pumping occasionally or pumping full time let them let people know let the next generation know that this is okay this is acceptable this is a part of a journey and we are in this thing together yes I agree I just like you like you were um, talking about well, not what you've been talking about, but one of the things that I love about this space now is just that it has it has evolved so much. Like, I'm just thinking about five years ago when I had to take an entire pump with me in the car. And now they have, like, these portable pumps, wearable pumps. It's like, this space has truly evolved. And I'm, I'm excited to be here. <laughs> 
So we have one more question. It was talking about, um, and it's no question is ever a stupid question, period. Like, mm -hmm. you know, a lot that happens. Here. So what is the craziest color of milk you've seen? And what is milk to change? So milk can color, you know, can be white, can be yellow, can be green, can be blue, can be red, like a pinkish red color. That just means that, you know, there's some type of blood in the milk. And so, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, we can see everything. You know, if we were nursing or, you know, if, if others that are pumping, like pumping, you see everything. You see your milk supply. You see how much you're getting. You see everything and like all those things play into your head. Is this enough or is the color right? Um, and, you know, co whatever color of milk based on like if you're a vegetarian or if you're dehydrated, you may see more of the blue color. Like milk color is fine. You know, serving it. If you see other colors, that is completely okay. It is nothing wrong if you see different color. Milk, your milk does change as your baby grows. So for me, I'm like two years in now. So my milk is like, it wasn't always like that. It's very thick, very creamy. Um, you know, as you start to pump less because you're, once your milk sits in your breast, you get like more fat in the milk and stuff. And so it can be hard to get it out when, you know, as time goes on, but milk becomes thicker over time. You have your fore milk and your high milk. Um, milk can just, <laughs> milk is amazing. Like it is absolutely amazing. And I'm just so thankful to be able to help people normalize how amazing so what's the what's what color? What's like what color have you seen? Yours. Oh so, I mean my milk is it tends to be a lot of times blue. Like you mind too. It tends to be a lot of times blue. Like I haven't had any strawberry milk which is mixed with blood. I just haven't had any. I've seen yeah. others with it. Um it and now my milk seems to be very yellow, like because yeah. everything. So those are like my common colors, but it doesn't mean that if someone has green or anything like that um you know that there's anything yeah when i did the daniel fast mine was green and i think it was because i had so many so much vegetables you know so many vegetables yeah. so it was green and i'm like oh it's green today you know but most of the time mine is um blue as well and okay. yeah even if i have like a plug it would be like the plug would be yellow and then the milk would be blue i'm like oh lord yeah. but yeah <laughs> yeah so we just wanted to pop on just to celebrate pumping community today, regardless of your nurse pumping. Thank you all for taking your lunch break with us. Thank you all for yes. like, time with us just to like come on to gym. I really wanted to set this up. Number one, she was the first person. I'm like, can we can we go live? Can we do this? Like we literally enjoy this space. Talk to each other. We really enjoy helping the community. So yeah. What's the biggest clog? Clog. Oh, clog. <laughs> the biggest clog. Oh, my gosh. See, I don't clog. I've seen the pictures in, like, other people's posts and stuff, but um, have you have you had any, like, big clogs or anything? Yeah. Been? And I don't know if it's because we I pump so often now. I mean, yeah. and I still don't get them. Yeah, I don't get them. Um, so I, I use sunflower lecithin that works for me. I use it now. I, look, we have to talk about that. <laughs> yes, so I do sunflower lecithin. Um, but I really have issues. I take it from that's what works for me personally. Um, but again, if you're struggling with clogs like heat, massage, vibration, taking a warm shower, not too hot, um, you know, not in your heat, not too hot, just enough. Hand massage, all those things are very, very critical. Um, and sometimes you got to change it up. So lately, at first I was, um, I was using a lot of hand massage, and then I pulled back out my again, and it's bringing me life. So never be afraid to use a different product. You know, like trying something else, going back to your hands again. Um, if you know your hand massage, you know. So yes, um, it's just. It's fun out here in these streets. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, we will not. We just really wanted to pop in and talk with you all. Uh, thank you all. Happy World Breast Pump Day for us all. We are here. Let the world know. <laughs> we are here. We are fans. And just thankful that someone took the time to create a day to celebrate. Because it's good to feel celebrated. Like, it is. It is. All the mothering journey, you know, 
dating journey, like, it's good to feel appreciated, you know, in any way. So, you have any last thoughts or anything? No, I just want to thank everybody for joining us. Whenever you join us, yes. it's always going to be like this. So, <laughs> <laughs> listen, because, I mean, we are here to educate as well. But we want you to know that it's it's fun in this community as well. So, you know, we're not going to be, like, real polished all the time. So, no. yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, we celebrate each other, and um, just this sisterhood is amazing. So that's all I have. Happy World Breastfeeding Day. It is okay to not be okay, okay? It is okay yeah. to not be okay. You'll be okay another day, but it's okay to have moments when you're not okay. Yes. And it doesn't make you less of a mom. It doesn't make you less of a person. It's, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay yeah. to take that breather to just say, you know what? I need this moment to recalibrate mm -hmm. that's okay you don't have to clean up every mess <laughs> for real because yeah. it's like listen you be look around these houses like i got a pump i got to clean i got a pump i got a this and this listen reset at night or you know choose a different time but if you're not okay you know just take that moment for you yes yes that's all i have thank you so Me too. <laughs> we will be all again we'll come back out that night, but we'll, we'll bring another peek at some in the future, but thank you all for joining us today, so I will see you soon. Bye. See y'all.